Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Talk with Drea and Friends. Um, today I'm here with DJ Fresh. So fresh, 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 fresh. <laughs> yes. I was gonna say your real name, but I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to give out the government yet. <laughs> if you want to say the real names. So today, guys, I am drinking. We can't. I don't want to. Oh, I don't know if we can show the name. I don't know how to you can be doing. Let's turn it this way. But we're drinking. We're sipping on some plum wine. Yes. We're gonna do some buka. We're gonna have a little chit chat. A little bit of everything. Yeah. Let me. Let me. Come on, 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 You've been on my Instagram forever. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been running into each other everywhere. Like, right. I've had Instagram since maybe like 2011? Whenever right. it came out. 2011 okay. or 2010. I think it was 2010. Whenever it came out, you guys, I had Instagram forever. And, oh God, my hands blow messed up. I don't want them to see. I ain't combing back there a little bit, but whatever. We're going <laughs> to scoot over like that. <laughs> and, anywho, I want to keep turning to you like that. I'm Lean over and talk to you like this. <laughs> so, anywho, I wanted to interview you because you was on Instagram, on my Instagram forever. And I said, damn, this dude is doing so much good shit. Like, he's doing a lot of stuff. Right. I saw you DJ at freaking regular, I saw, when you started, from parties, you did backyard events. Right. You did everything. And then I saw you elevate and evolve to doing school. Mm-hmm. School dances, proms, and everything. Right. So, um, my niece, we're not going to say which school she go to. However, <laughs> she had a, a video she did. Right. And I'm like, yo, I know that dude. I was like, he's, he's a DJ or whatever like that. He's on my Instagram or whatever. So she's like, he's real cool. You might like him. So I was watching from then. And then finally, we're really, and I also saw you at like uh, mutual friends or whatever, gatherings and stuff. But what really got me to say, let me have him on the show since I started it was when I saw you at my cousin's wedding. Yes. <laughs> that was that wedding. That was it. And, how, and when I tell you guys you got to hire him and book him, because at the end, I'm going to give his information. I'm going to put it in the subscription. It That wedding was fucking lit. Lit. Like, you, and I like the way you engage with the crowd. Like, you hype the crowd up. You're not afraid. Because sometimes when you go to parties and everything like that, you, you have a DJ. They just on the mic and they talk. You... <laughs> so what I realized uh, when it comes to any event, you know, especially when, well, for me, especially when it comes to weddings, I realize um, for what I charge for weddings, I can't just be a regular behind the booth DJ. You know, I wasn't, I never thought of, thought of myself as such. You know, I realized for me, you know, what would I want to play if I wasn't DJing? You know, what would, the, what would I want to hear? Um, how would I want to react? How would I want the DJ to react? So my thing is i don't like just being a spectator i like being a participator so whatever turn up is going on i want to be a part of it so i can't just stay behind the booth so i need to come out and engage the crowd and see what the crowd is doing and you know when it comes to weddings you know just people like that personal interaction because now it it seems more different it doesn't seem what i call commercial it seems much more personal yeah and, and then was, you don't want to be bored right that's another thing because then you feel like okay i'm not a wedding i'm i'm just at home yeah in a dress i'm at home in exactly. a suit you know what i'm saying and people want that personal feeling so from when i started doing that people have come to me and told me like yo this was different like this was i've never had this type of experience at a wedding so that's why i call it the fresh experience because it's going to be something like you've never encountered before that was amazing. Like I tell you, like God, seriously, like He gave out like the the um damn it the lights for the neck and, yeah. the, and the wrist. And when they were dancing, because you know when the groom he throws the little I mean I can't even think right now. The, we the, the garter. Yes, <laughs> he threw it, and then she threw the flowers, the bouquet, and I was like, damn, you came on the dance floor and you started dancing as if you caught it, and I don't think you caught it. I don't, no. think, I don't think you caught it. No, so when it came to, so for that <laughs> wedding, so what happened is for that wedding is that the 
the garter was so what happened when they threw the bouquet, mm -hmm. two girls actually caught the bouquet. Yeah. And they weren't willing to let it go. Yeah, that was true. That's true. So then one person caught the garter. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, so I said, listen, this is what we're gonna do. You take the garter for one female mm -hmm. and I'll take the garter for the other female. I said, we can't just leave one hanging. Yeah. So then I said, okay, no, he said, okay, no problem. So he went first, and I was just like, yo, like, that's all you got? like." And you gave a dance. You gave a performance. Yes, that's what I'm about to say. It's a performance. <laughs> you you did, like, a little snake type thing. I was like, you know what? <laughs> this is, like, no other DJ out there. This is a person who pleased the crowd. Right. And literally, that's, like, one of my hashtags is crowd pleaser, client thriller, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I just want the people to have a good time, you know, at the expense of, like, even, I don't want to take the expense of me because I don't, feel ashamed of what I do you know yeah. I love what I do regardless of what it is because I realize when you love something you have to put passion into it if your passion is not in it the people are going to know whether you mm -hmm. like it you love it or you hate it mm -hmm. and one thing I don't want the people to do people to feel that is if I hate what I do you know that's why people mm -hmm. tell me you DJ so much why don't you go full-time that's because I love my nine to five mm -hmm. but I also love DJ and one thing I don't want to do is let go of my nine to five and then turn DJing into a job. Yeah. And that, when you turn yeah. DJing into a job, now you run out of your passion because now it's considered work. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people don't love work, but they love what they do, which is their passion. Mm -hmm. So DJing is my passion. I never want to turn my passion into work. So I want to ask you something. Um, let me see, because I know, you never know, actually, when you're on Instagram, guys, and this is another thing, thank you. Mm -hmm. When you're on Instagram, you never know who is on your Instagram and, and what type of person they are because we have a lot in common. Yes, we, we both, do. <laughs> <laughs> Find we, that out. Yes, we both are Sagittarius. Yes, we are. I'm a December 8th baby. I'm December 6th. And we both are, well, I don't know if you're full Spanish. We both like Latin, Spanish, mixed, Afro, Latina, whatever you, Latin, whatever you want to call us. Uh, my father's Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. My mother's black. My We're not going to go all the way into their backgrounds, but that's just what it is. My mother's Dominican. Mm -hmm. My father's Dominican. So <laughs> See? And I, I don't speak no Spanish, guys. But you have no language del español. Yeah, not me. Not nothing. I, I can say, ¿Qué pasa? Poquito. Si, si, si. Shit like that. Espero, por favor. <laughs> Things like that. Okay, okay, okay. Like, don't even speak Spanish to me because I don't know what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> at all. <laughs> like, period. I'll be like, I'll catch little words. Like, you'll say something, I'll be like, yeah, yellow? Oh yeah, yeah. Bus? Okay. Don't no. Don't even do it. Don't get embarrassed. I hate that. Because people hear my name, mm -hmm. especially my full name, and they, they start speaking Spanish. Or if I wear my natural hair, yeah. and they're like, oh, you're Dominican, da da da. And I'm like, and, 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 and I get a, this is off topic though, but I get offended when they do that. Because I'm like, why do all Dominicans have to be black or something? Like, you know, you have white Dominican, you have, you we, you have black Puerto Ricans, guys, okay? Everybody not Dominican because they got brown skin. But I want you to get into it about how you started DJing. And what age, what made you DJ, how did you get into that? Um, so I started actually, um, the first event I actually DJ was, I would probably say, well, the first actual event I DJ, I would probably say was an embarrassment. But um, <laughs> through every embarrassment, it's a lesson learned. It was? Learned. Yeah, it was because... You know, before I used to DJ um, small events, so I used to DJ through an, um, an iPod. We're going to take it back. I'm going to tell you my real age. Yeah. So I used to actually DJ through an iPod, through regular house speakers, just connect the audio jack and just play through there, scroll, play the next one. So those are like little small 20 people events. Mm -hmm. But my first actual event was, I remember, uh, was a friend's baby shower. Mm. And, um, and she was Dominican. And if you know... Dominican baby showers. Mm -hmm. They are not dedicated to the baby. No, they're not. They're dedicated to the adults, okay? Cause, and they're not forever. Right, because her baby shower was from 6 p.m. to, I think, 1 to 2 in the morning. That's not a baby shower. That's a party. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I came with my tablet. I mean, not my tablet, my, my laptop. And I came with house speakers, not DJ speakers, house speakers. If you know what house speakers is, so you know. Yeah. So the big, The big ones? No, it was like small ones, okay. like straight from a, just a regular stereo system. Okay. So, to me, it was an embarrassment because what happened is one guy was there and he was telling her, he was, you know, talking on the low. I, I could hear, but I can't hear. Mm -hmm. She was telling me, oh, you know, raise the, raise the, raise the music. 
<laughs> right. And, me, and me being naive, I'm like, oh yeah. So I raised it, and in five minutes, the speakers blew out. Luckily, there wasn't guests were in there yet. But what they had to do was call a real DJ who had oh, real equipment wow. and had him come show up. So to me, it was an embarrassment, but it was still a lesson learned. Like, if you want to really do this, you have to invest. Take it, yeah, it takes right. it seriously. So it was August 15, 2009, that Ooh. I went. <laughs> I remember the date, because if you're serious about your business, you're going to remember dates. It was August 15, 2009. I went to Sam Ash, and shout out to my boy Fernando. Mm -hmm. um, we, I invested right there, the, bought the bag, $2,000 into equipment. Mm. So I bought um, a controller, I already had a laptop, and I just brought two speaker stands, and boom, we just started working from there. So that was like the worst, kind of like one of the worst DJing gigs you did? Um, I would probably say the most embarrassing, yes. Um, that the worst one, but it wasn't really worse, it was when I was DJing another baby show in the Bronx, and I had, besides my laptop, I had all my music on my hard drive. Mm -hmm. And it was an external hard drive. Mm -hmm. If you know anything about external hard drives, that little wire there, you have to protect it at all costs. Because once it begins to not work, mm -hmm. then your hard drive doesn't work. If your hard drive doesn't work, you cannot get all your songs mm -hmm. or whatever file you have there. So on my laptop, I remember I was, it was on a Sunday and I was, uh, plug, I was DJing and all of a sudden the external hard drive stopped working. So what ended up me having a variety of 3,000, 4,000 songs became now a variety of only 800 songs. Oh my gosh. And all the newest songs that were just out in 2015, because that's when the baby shower was, I remember that, it was literally, it was 2000, no, it was, yeah, 2016, and all the newest songs were in the external hard drive. So the, um, the, they still had a good time, they started to turn up, but for me, it was just another lesson learned. Like, what you need to do is not invest your money into an external hard drive, but so the, it's like as you go in, you learn the different right, stuff as, exactly. as, damn. Well, I mean, like you said, it's a lesson learned because the same thing with me. I have a um, online boutique. You know how some, some celebrities or what do you want to call them? Mm, socialites or whatever. Okay, that works. Yeah. Um, They ask for, they tell you to mail things in to PO mm -hmm. boxes. I won't say names, but I had two idiots. <laughs> Idiot one and the idiot two. Yeah, from Love and Hip Hop franchise. And basically didn't really do what they said they were going to do. Mm -hmm. So my thing is I, I feel like with with um promotions, if you have clothes and everything like that, I personally won't do that it, again, ever again. Like that and that was a long time ago. It was two thousand like you say you remember dates. Yeah. So I started my business in two thousand thirteen. All right. Excuse me, that was early two thousand and fourteen. And I would never do that again. So what I would do now is I will just do hashtagging. And since I do get a lot of compliments now because of like where I go or places I go or whatever, I don't even look for nobody to promote for me. I put, and this is gonna be on another episode probably, I'll teach you guys how to do that. But promotion is self toy and you can watch other people's pages, especially successful DJ, DJs or um, online boutique owners or whatever. You can watch their page to see what they're doing, not to kind of like mimic or copy them, but to get an idea of how to go about certain things so you can do something similar but with your own twist. That's what I'll say because you're right about that. As you go, you're supposed to learn things, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, I should never went on that road. But anyway, growing up, right, what made you want to get into DJing? Um, so to be honest, I didn't plan to get into DJing. Um, to me, it just happened really? because, yeah, Cause I, I love music, so I remember um, my, my thing with music is I just love to dance. I just love to have a good time. So, you know, I'm Dominican and quote unquote, most Dominicans, their favorite genre of music is either bachata or merengue, but mm -hmm. I'm the Dominican who, my number one genre of music is salsa. Really? Yes, I love salsa. Salsa uh, straight off the back, from the top. You play it, I don't need a partner. I'll dance it by myself and she'll come along and we'll dance together. But number one is salsa after that, everything else could come along. Oh, I can't do. Uh. -uh. No. Oh. It's, it's, I mean, you know what? I, like I'm telling y'all, like that they, uh, like fake Spanish. That's what people say. And, but it's a, and I hope people don't get mad at me. But it's a difference because I honestly do feel this way. And even though I'm mixed and I have Puerto Rican in me, I find it not to say Puerto Ricans don't love their heritage, but I think that for some reason I feel like Dominicans, they're more in touch with it. If that mm. makes sense, because like growing up. Uh, uh, me knowing a lot of Puerto Rican people and just being with like my family, 
we, we're not forced or we don't, it's not, I don't want to say the wrong word, but it's just that we're not, we, we don't speak Spanish growing up. Like, it's okay. not forced or we don't have to because everybody speaks English. But I noticed having Dominican friends, um, I had a couple of Dominican friends. Their, their grandparents or their parents don't speak English. And right. they're like, I don't care to learn that shit. Like, we over here, but I don't care. <laughs> like, that, that's, I guess that's just the Dominican thing. I'm telling you, they're stubborn. Like, the older people I find, they don't care to learn English like that. They'll be like, whatever, right. who cares? You, you understand? So it's like, you guys speak it, I feel like, not only because you, you're a tour, because you kind of have to, because how are you going to speak to your grandparents? How you speak to your mom? Right. So it's like that. But and with me, it's like, everybody speak English. And they speak Spanish, too. But it's like, okay, if you don't speak Spanish, then it's, it is what it is, whatever. But yeah. I just feel like that. I but um, that. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it's not a bad thing. It's just what it is. But... Of course, Puerto Ricans, we do speak Spanish. And another thing is, when I do try to speak it a little bit, I don't have the I don't have the So, so I'm trying to get it corrected. Like, I don't want you to correct me. If I want to speak Spanglish, leave me the fuck alone. I don't got to go, I don't got to do that. Like, I say Garcia. I don't go Garcia. I don't know how to say all that shit. You got to roll the R. I said, I was good enough right there. Yeah. I'd be like, Juan Garcia, Jose, Jesus. They'd be like, no, it's Jesus. Garcia. I don't got time for that shit. Like, leave me the fuck alone. I don't got time. So, yeah. Anyway, do you look up to any DJs now? Like, do you follow any DJs or admire any DJs from, like, from where they started to where they are now? Um, I won't say admire, but I will say they've taught me. Um, there's DJs who, uh, back in the days, when I first um, started to DJ or said I was going to become a dude, I was, you know, just... They, they knew me as a DJ, per se, mm -hmm. but they never gave me opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would ask them, well, you know, let me get five minutes or, you know, what the case may be. And, you know, they'll say, oh, you know, not right now. And it was cool. I respected it because, you know, I know one thing of a DJ, when they have a crowd going, because I know me right now, when there's a crowd going, like, I don't want to be interrupted. Like, let me just stay in my zone. Because one thing about a DJ is it's not... It's the, the work is not really to get people on the dance floor. You could get people on the dance floor, get them moving at a song. Mm -hmm. The work is really keeping them on the dance floor. That's where the work is at. So once I know I have a certain amount of people on the dance floor, I'm not working to really keep them on. I'm working to get everybody else who's still sitting down, get them up. Get them up on the floor. Right. So now I have a look. Exactly. Yeah. So the DJs back in the day, what they did is they taught, I learned from them as far as what they did correctly and what they didn't do correctly. So that way, at least I know when it's my time to shine, when it's my turn to DJ, I know exactly what to say, what not to say, how to say it. Mm -hmm. And then just add my own little twist to it. So I would go to like different clubs and venues like on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Saturdays, whether it was in Brooklyn, whether it was in Connecticut. Like I would go in different places by myself just to scope the scene. Mm -hmm. Just so what I could say is quote unquote, study my craft, do my homework. Mm -hmm. So when it was my turn, you know, you and right. know you get into. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I want to say this. When did you see, because I don't know, when you first started, did you start to charge or you were just doing it as like a little hobby? No, I started to charge, but I was just charging. Like cheap, like whatever. Exactly, because at the end of the day, you're trying to get your feet wet. So yeah. you can't charge people an arm and a leg and, and they don't know who you are. Exactly. Or you really don't know what you're doing. And not to say you didn't, but you know, you're still learning. That's another thing. Um, When did you see yourself, what, what, what moment or what, Event you did when you, you look and you say, Yo, I'm a shit. And <laughs> ah, I'm kind of like, this kind of like, Master this. Facts, like, yep. when did you do that? <laughs> woo, woo. Man, what event was that? Um, I'm going to be honest, I think after probably after every event now, maybe I I don't think, well, I, I've always learned never to think like I'm the shit, to be honest. Mm -hmm. My thing is always. Oh, is <laughs> yeah. I know she got another one. Um, I always think of. What can what did I do now mm -hmm. where I could become better for my next event? Yeah. You know, because that's why the name is is so fresh. You know, one thing about fresh is you always have to have something fresh the next day, the next time that people see you. You can't be can't have the same type of style of music or same anything, you know, from your last event. You know, that's the purpose of the word fresh. Mm -hmm. So I would probably say when I really saw that my craft started excelling was and you know at the end of the day men lie women lie numbers don't mm -hmm. is when i dj 19 weddings in 2017. really yes so when i dj 19 weddings literally in 2017 i'm like i think i have something going here mind you i started in 2000 and 
nine. My business really didn't take off, honestly, till 2017. But I stood consistent in what I was doing. And consistency is key to anything. Yeah, that's true. Because that's why I say, um, to me and my homegirls, we have like a, a group that we, well, I started and we in together. And that's what I say too, is like, you have to be consistent. Because even though I had my business from 2013, I never, I wasn't consistent until recently. Mm. Like, I, I wasn't consistent. And right. still now, I, I slack a little bit because I'm into so many other things. Like, I do the podcast. Okay. I do lashes. I do massages. Yeah. So, it's like, damn. Sometimes I, I have to breathe and get back to my, my firstborn, my baby. That's a fact. And can't forget. But I do see the difference. Like, I do a lot of hand-in-hand sales, too. Because I have clients who know me personally mm. so instead of them always going online they'll call me or they'll text me and i'll have them you know set up or whatever okay. but i just i agree with you i feel like you have to be consistent you have to be right. consistent so um what i wanted to say is for the dj that's good but i did come across your instagram today recently and i saw <laughs> that they're nominating you well, no, nah, they're not. They're not really nominating me. So, what is um, that about? Tell me. Tell me. First of all, the the organization or the program or whatever it is. Right. I want to know the name so everybody can know it. Okay. And I want to know what it is and and what they're doing. Okay. So, so Sassy Science Entertainment. Um, basically, what I'm a part of the team and what initially what we would do is, um, we would do a game adult game nights, and we would Ooh. do it like periodically according to the month. So, you know, we would do like a Valentine's Day. Um, game night we would do um, uh, for March. Um, what's what's in March? Oh, I forgot. Um, but we would do like different game night throughout the year. So what happened with with the late passing of um, Nipsey Hussle, Nipsey Hussle, um, the the leader, um, uh, she put it in her heart that she wanted to honor men of color. Because oh God, that's so dope. Right, because what happened is that men of color were. Wait a minute, let's go back. Not to interrupt you. What is her name? Shout her out right now. Oh, and we're uh, gonna shout that page too. That oh, is so dope. Right, so her name is Saskia. Uh, but the page is Sassi S A S S I E S A E N T on Instagram. Um, so she. This is our second annual. Um, and last year was the year um that they actually honored me as an honorable mention. Um, so I. I, I was appreciative of that because I've been doing this now for now it's gonna be now it's officially ten years mm -hmm. but for nine years I've never received an award for what I do yeah so for them to honor me and I didn't even know about it to be honest I didn't know about it till the day of my job a part of the team so they kept that on the low from me for how, for like the f six months that they were planning this and um, I found out that day so oh, I was God. just honored. That they honor me and stuff like that. So this year we're on, we're doing it this uh, Sunday. Where we're honoring um, men of color, um, and we're actually doing the first ever uh, Mamba Award, Mamba in honor of course the late Kobe Bryant. Um, you know, just oh a man. Oh my men. god, this is a great. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, listen. I, I shout out to how you said Sasi. Saskia, yeah. Saskia, yeah. Shout out to her man. That's that's dope. That's yeah. really dope and. How do you, how do you, someone will go about joining the team or even following the page or going to an event like? Yeah, so um, of course, if you the the page on Instagram is uh, Sasi Sa Entertain E N T, so it's S A S S I E S A E N T, or just follow me on Instagram DJ So Fresh DJ S O F R E Triple S H, um, and I'll definitely will you will definitely see them on my page. Um, and you can inquire about joining the team or just support and coming out to events. I know we're actually planning another game night right now, actually, um, which will be um, a thank you event, mm -hmm. just for people supporting us throughout the year. We're looking tentatively um, for the month of uh, December, but if we can have it in December. <laughs> I, I always love when people say December. Go ahead. Because <laughs> it's the best month of the year. And it, right? Exactly. Oh my God, go ahead. Um, if we don't do it in December, then definitely our first game night of the year will be in February 2021. What type of games do you guys play? Anything or? Um, well, the first couple of games that we play, um, of course, um, just what I call warm-up games. So you'll see Jing on the table. Mm -hmm. You'll see the Giant um, Connect Four and things like that. Um, then after that, we just start playing um, games according to the theme of the game night. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, the February, we always call it the Red Light Special. So, you know, people have to come in, they get a sticker, they put their, what we, I call their, um, 
their 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 name and not your actual name, mm -hmm. but you know you just put whatever name you want to be called for the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. So you know dudes be coming in, they want to be called Black Panther. You know women want to <laughs> come in, they got a sticker that says Hi, my name is Wet Wet. Um, oh my God! No. I come in, they listen. My <laughs> y'all don't even need a sticker. Y'all know my name. My name ain't gonna change. This is who I am. Yes. Um. <laughs> You know, so we do think, you know, because it's, we just want people to just have what we call um, adult-friendly time. You know, an adult. So it's a kind of an adult game night. So um, we play, um, like, different drinking games, um, different just activity just to get people involved and just have a good time just to, quote-unquote, get away from reality for, like, those couple, couple of four hours. hours. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to know, do you do, I know you DJ, mm -hmm. but are you dab because you do have bowling that you could do as well. <laughs> what else do you do besides those things? Oof. Tell people about yourself. Oh man, DJ well, so fresh. Well, let's see about me. Good lord, um, put me on the spot. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm I'm more so of a chameleon. More so, like I just like to I could blend into anything. So that's a Sagittarius in you. I right. swear, it's it's <laughs> it's like we just be falling into place sometimes. We be like, right. what's that? Exactly. How much money we can make out of that too? Because you know, can't do everything for free. Facts. <laughs> right. Things cost we right just, now. Know what I mean? We just be hustling, but that's good. So you, okay. Hmm. Yeah. So I do. You know, if I could, you know, I, this past weekend, you know, I tried top golf. Um, next year, I'm trying to do a skydiving. See, uh, that's where I draw the line. What? There's no skydiving for me. I wanted to try miniature golf. Okay. I want to do that. Like oh. that's on my bucket list. So you want to stay on the ground? Yeah. Why you don't want to fly? No. Why? In the airplane. To go on a trip. <laughs> to go somewhere. <laughs> but to jump out? Yeah. I'll, sit, I'll, either I'll be at the bottom waving like, okay, oh. come, come, come. Hopefully you make it down here great. Or I'll be at, in the plane with people. We'll, we'll meet y'all. We'll be supposed to land this plane. Because I ain't jumping. Nah, I ain't doing it. My homegirl. And I think it's a, mm, she's a fire sign. She's a Leo. Though. Okay. This girl will bungee jump, skydive, whatever. And I'm like, girl. That yeah, is a bungee jump. Jesus, though. Yeah, I, wanna, I, just, I'm, I think because I, I just have certain goals that I want to accomplish. And skydiving was one that I wanted to accomplish before I turned 35. But hooray, 35. So I'm like, all right, we need to complete this by next year. I'm scared. I don't know. I don't like heights for it. You know what's so crazy? When you're young, when you're a child, right, mm -hmm. and you're a preteen or whatever, you don't have any fears like that. So I will be like, when I was younger, I was like a little tomboy. I was like jumping across stuff. I used to raise, I used to roll the blade. I used to ride my, like I used to ride like a, a, I was the first one out of my sister to learn about it. Like I was, deter I was determined as well. Like if you tell me I can't do something, I'm gonna look at you like you're dumb and I'm gonna do it. Like you can't, I'm like, yeah, I could do that. Well, and you I'm can't skydive. No, not except for that. Cause I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I, tried, I tried, listen. <laughs> except for that, cause I, I, I'm not. But I used to ride my bike down the hill because I, 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 mm -hmm. I grew up in Spring Creek Gardens behind the movie theater, but I moved at a young age. However, I used to ride, and I used to, like, the dudes, the little boys, they used to ride, like, in the, in the park in Spring Creek, you have to, it's like a little um, thing you could go up, like a little hill you go up, and then you go down with the bike. And you know how the, the boys go down fast because yeah. it's going down? I think I'm going to ride this bike, I'm going to ride this bike. And I took my baby sister. My baby sister was on enough again. I'm so she'll kill me. She was like, I don't know how old she was, but I know I was young. I probably had to be around ten, maybe nine. Mm -hmm. And she was way younger than me. And I had her on the front of the bike. I said, just sit there. You know, like you put the baskets on the front of the bike. Oh, I said, just sit right there and hold it. Cause my mother was annoying. I had to take my my sister there. But I went outside. <laughs> they had to go outside. Whatever I did, they had to do too. So I had. I said, I'm gonna put her on this bike. Whatever. I'm not gonna leave at the top of the hill. And she's gonna ride this thing with me. I was riding on the bike. Body, boom, 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 boom. She fell off. I cried so bad. Oh, and I cried because of her. And I also cried because of my ass whip. So, oh my God. Ah. I said, don't tell her. Don't tell her what happened. I get to the house, guess what? The little two other little fucking brats. They go and they tell my mother, ah, she said she dropped off the bike. And I got ah, my ah, ass whip. So, I, I don't know. After that, like growing up, I was just scared. I was fearless. Mm. Now it's like, I'm not doing that. Yeah, I look down, I be, I don't know, I get anxiety. I'm like, I can't breathe. Like, for real. Like, my heart will be so fast, and I start losing the air, and I'm like, I have a panic attack. You know why? Why? Because of we, as we get older, we know reality. When we're younger, we don't think of reality. We think exactly. of... Exactly, that's true. We think of 
the we think of the thrill. So we live off the thrill, but as we get older, it's less of a thrill, but more of a reality. Yeah, like I could die. I'm right. just looking exactly. down like woo, woo. Exactly. That's Those little is. houses is is far. Yeah. Woo. I'm like, let me just stay right here. Like, I let me tell you something. I went to um, it probably was a kiddie park, probably like a great adventure or something. It's not for kids, and it was like a roller coaster that went up, mm-hmm. like high. And I was like, yeah, I can't do it. It was kids and shit on there. Mm, I was so oh, scared. God. I was on, yeah, yeah, because I started to think like, <laughs> I started to think about like on TV if if the freaking ride gets stuck. Find a destination. <laughs> I get real like that's why I don't like scary movies, guys. I can't watch a scary movie. I'll sit there, man, talk like yeah, let's watch it. Then when the movies on, like I watch scary movies in the daytime, like by like twelve in the afternoon, so I could go about the rest of my day, so I could sleep better at night. Cause like I'm not watching scary movie eight o'clock at night. Who does that? Yeah, <laughs> but not, you know, not weird, normal people. Exactly, but you know the weird thing about me, I would watch Oxygen and Snaps at night, and that's scary too. Them bitches look scary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yet she won't skydive. All right. All right. What do you want people to know about you? That, I mean, if you want your event, if you want your event to actually be an experience, like, don't settle for less. Book DJ So Fresh. I'm not... <laughs> I'm, I feel like that's a slogan you, you always thought of. Yes, exactly. <laughs> because, I mean, and I'm not saying this just for saying, I'm just saying this because it's reality. I've been doing this now for 10 years. And you know, a lot a lot of things don't last ten years. Marriages don't last ten years, businesses don't last ten years, That's true. relationships don't last ten years, cars don't last ten years. Many things don't last ten years, but DJ So Fresh has lasted ten years plus and I don't see myself slowing down. You know, like I said, twenty seventeen I did nineteen weddings, twenty eighteen I did twenty weddings, twenty nineteen I did twenty five weddings. So and like I said, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. And the numbers kept going up is because businesses got better. The name got out there, and people knew that the quality of the product that I was giving to them mm, was, worth, was worth the price that I was charging. And one thing I know about me, I charge the price that I know I'm worth. I'm not coming down any less. Want to know why? Because when you go to Gucci, Fuji, whatever, Fendi, Hendi, whatever it's called. You don't go down. Yeah. And that's the thing, too. Like, I I stopped doing that, too, because I'm like, yo, yeah. I'm stopping giving these little no. hoes. Sorry. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all asking for too many discounts. Right. Like, right. They don't no. discount over here. You can't afford to give your friend twenty five dollars, forty dollars, fifty dollars, sixty dollars when you wear a moschino machino and Gucci Gucci Gucci. No, you're right about that because a lot of people will sit there, and that's why I don't do. And honestly, I'm telling you guys right now, I don't like to do business with friends. I don't do it. Like mm. when I have new new things that come out, it's like I will say I have two friends, right? And I'll be honest, I have two friends that has been faithfully supporting me, faithfully. And every time, like, their birthday or whatever come around, even, you know, even when I know they come in, because they drive, one of my homegirls, and this is crazy, because I just met her. She, I haven't known her for, like, 10 years or whatever. Mm-hmm. I just met her, and I had to do a little <laughs> I just met her, whatever, not too long ago, but we've been friends for a couple of years now, and she'll drop all the way, oh, shit. Don't worry about it. Sure? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. She'll drive. You could do it like this. Yeah. She'll drive all the way from Jersey. I mean, not Jersey. Queens. Mm-hmm. To come out here. I set up the rack for her. She'll pay for stuff. She'll try stuff on. Whatever, whatever. And just to know that this person is. And, and not to say that I'm like special, special. Because uh, people watch me like, oh, well, she could drop to the store. She could drop to you too. But it's a difference. It's a difference when it's uh, support from your friend. Like right. the person that, that you fucked with. And I'm like, yo, I'll be hitting her off sometime with like little things in the bag or whatever. Or I should like to show like appreciation. Like I have appreciation on um, month or day, like every mm. other month or something. I do like an appreciation thing. Right. And I put like a little gift, like a little gift bag for the people who I know have been supporting me the whole time. And I mean, nice. never ask for a discount, never sit there and, and ask me to lower anything or whatever. People who have been supporting me forever. And these are the women that I, I cherish. And, and, and you're supposed to cherish those type of people. So yeah. shout out to the people who are, and I will say, I'll just say it. Shout out to the people who are not cheap and looking for a handout. Ah. No, for real. Because yeah. if you can sit there and you sit here and you, you, oh, I got this, I got that, I don't need this, I don't need that. But then you can't give your friend something. 
then to me, I feel like that's shady and that's cheap. Don't ask. I never. Let me say something about me. If I asked for a discount before, it's probably because I was unaware and because you did that to me. Nowadays, I never ask for no discount. Like now, being a the woman, because you know every year you grow. Right. So now, me, if I'm buying something, I buy it. I bought things from people. Excuse me. From people, I feel like they overpriced. I'm like, fuck it, let me just buy from a shit black entrepreneur. I did pop-up shops before, and I was in a pop-up shop like, yo, let me just buy this off this girl because she's doing her thing, and it's cute. Who am I? Like, I sell everything. I really don't have to buy anything, honestly. I can, I sell everything. I could get a hair vendor if I wanted to. Because mm. I have vendors. You know how, like, you have vendors that, that dip through and dabble? Because yeah. I have vendors. Like, one of my vendors is from, um, Vetamine. Is she Vetamine? Or the better? Where is she from? Is she from there? Philippines, okay. from the Philippines, and she always said, "Oh, I have here, I have here. I could say send me here, but I'd rather buy it from the place I buy it from. You know what I'm saying? Like some things you're just not going to, you're not going to get into, right. or I don't, I'm not going to do certain things like um, nail polish and stuff. Mm. Like I could get nail polish, but I'm not going to sell that. Right. So at the end of the day, I feel like when you see a black young woman, a black hustler, minority person doing their thing, support them." Be supportive. Be supportive. Try to sit there and be like, you know what? Even if you never used him before, but you know him, my thing is support and support. I'll be like, listen, this is my DJ. That's how I, I present things to people. Yeah. I always say, this is my DJ. Use my DJ. I'll refer to somebody like that. Or if I know somebody that do real estate, that's my realtor. Who, who have to know? That's how you you support people. Here, this is my, cause that's what grown people do anyway. This is my, my realtor. You can her, this is my DJ, I use her all the time, this is my chef, like, you don't really have to use these people, but just to know that your name was mentioned when the person called this person, that's going to be like, damn, she never even used me, but she sent somebody to me, Right. you understand, that means a lot, to me, I feel like that means a lot, and also, I feel like support as well as booking you, promoting you, showing up to an event, Supporting, like I, I feel like it's a lot. Supporting, you could do, you could support in, in many different ways. I feel like a lot of people, they it, it goes over their head. And they feel like, oh well, I don't know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not gonna here or whatever. I'm not gonna do this, so I'm not gonna support. Yeah, I mean, I've had that before, where you know, I used to do private events a lot, and people wanted to, you know, I want to come out and support, it, and I couldn't invite them to come out. But then, um, shout out to my DJ manager and ambassador, mm-hmm. you know. Um, we would throw bowling parties, and bowling parties is just twenty dollars, and you bowl all night, all you want, and people started coming out to support. But then, as you know, the prices started going up mm-hmm. for X, Y, Z reasons. You know, they started coming out less and less. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would probably say I had a flood of people come out, which probably shocked me to be honest. Was the day I debuted um, in the city um, at a club, which was like my club debut per se um in the city and i had a lot and that was like my dj anniversary two years ago and a lot of people came out and i was shocked at the number of people that came out because i had to come out back and forth you know just to get people because the club was so packed they wasn't letting nobody in Mm. but the promoter said whoever you got that's coming for you let me know and i'll let them in Mm. and the number of people that was coming out i was just like i remember matter of fact i did a wedding two a month prior to my debut and the bride and groom came out they took the LIRR got off in the city and came to support and to me that blew my mind because I was like these people didn't have to come out they didn't have to associate with me no more but because I left such an impression on their wedding they said we got to come out and support this guy so you know shout out to them um shout out to everybody who supported me over the year the people from day one who gave me an opportunity my the people I call day one, they know who they are. I don't. I still charge them the price I charge them from day one. Mm-hmm. I don't charge them my prices now. I wonder why? Because they still support me to this. That's day. the thing. That's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> so people who hear this don't get an attitude, or get mad. It's just what it is. I feel like because uh, like I have people, and this is a girl. Shout out to my home girl, and I'll I say her name, Joyce. All right, because she's the first day I met this girl. She was asking me things. I'm like, yeah, so close to the first day. She asked me to see an outfit. She was going to, I'll never forget, an all-black event. Mm. An all-black uh, boat ride. Her and her friend. And I was like, yeah, I got this little nice piece. It was like a nice little one-piece jumper, shorts jumper, whatever. And it had like the little thin around the waist. And it's like fringes. It was like worn leather fringes. 
I was like, this shit, that will look fly on you or whatever. And she was like, yeah. So she came up and she got, she never asked another question. And she did say, let me, can I have it for this amount? Can mm. I have she pulled out the cash, See? gave me the money. And it was only $35. But to me, I feel like that goes a long way. And ever since then, she has been consistent like that. She'll call me and listen, do you have any outfits for me? I want to go here, I want to go there. And I'll come, listen, let me say something. I treat my, I treat my clients good. Right. She, I, I treat them good. She, I have like my little rack out unfold the rack, put her size out on the rack. I have champagne. What? She'll try, yeah, she'll try stuff on. We have the champagne going. She'll try it because that's what I do for my clients who I like to call my private personal shoppers. Got it. I do stuff like that. And one of my co workers, shout out to Shannon, she do the same thing. She'll bring her daughters and she has been supporting me from day one, too. She's always been supportive. Always. So when her birthday came this year, I was like, nah, I'm going to do something nice for her. I got to do something nice because she has been very supportive. And that's a friend of mine that we always go up and down. Like, you know, you have people you bicker with, you argue with. Yeah. She's a little older than me. And I know, I have no, I've known her since, damn, since 2007. Wow. 13. Yeah. Since like 2007. And me and her, she, shout out to these, these two women. I can say nobody else support me because I love all the support I have. Yeah, we appreciate but, all of you. Exactly. But I would just say to those women, and I'm going to get emotional. Those two women, because for real, because you know, supporting somebody and being consistent that's a motherfucking thing. It sure and is. And you know what? Let me stop. My sister, too. My All my sisters support me in some They, they would have came for you. Man. Yeah, yeah. But my sister Karina, I love all you guys, but Karina, she's been real supportive, too. And that's my blood sister. And she never asked for a discount. I don't ask for discounts mm. either. So she's getting. She, uh, Word. Follow her What's Instagram that? page because she do good ass fucking drinks. Uh, Karina's edibles. I think she changed it though. Liddy drinks. Liddy drink. You know her. Yeah, I know her. Yeah. yeah. So she got the she got the Liddy drinks going on. I never asked for no discount either. So we we go back and Listen, forth. It be it be it be the people that was surprised. And I remember, and the reason why I say I said as far as you know I don't offer discounts or anything is because my I remember my sister has she has twin nephews. Mm -hmm. And it was their first birthday party. And, you know, to be family, I'm not going to charge you. You know what I'm saying? You know, to DJ or whatever. So, initially, I DJ their first birthday party. I go home. What happened? I got, she, she, and what she did, she thinks she's smart. So, what she initially did, she, like, previously asked me, like, weeks ago, oh, you know, um, I got a friend who wants to know how much would you charge to DJ a kid's party for a certain amount. I'm like, oh, I gave her a price. Mm -hmm. I go home after DJing my twin's nephew, which is her boy's birthday party. I look at my Chase account, it's that same exact amount. Oh my God. And I told her, like, you didn't have to. She said, no, I understand we're family, but I also know it's a business. Yeah. I was like, the fact that my sister thought about that, I was like, yo, people got to start thinking, right? Yeah. Like, just because we're friends, mm -hmm. friendship ain't got nothing to do with business. Exactly. Because if I work for a Louis Vuitton store and you come in the store, oh yeah, we friends, but guess what? This costs this amount. Mm -hmm. I'm going to charge you this amount. Mm -hmm. So just because... It's not that type of brand. I got a fresh brand. She got the Andrea Closet brand or anything else that comes. So it's still a brand and you got to learn that even though it's a business, you got to respect the brand that comes with the business. It's true. It's true. A lot of people don't do that. It be go on and on, but I really feel like just respect it and, and support. If, you, if you're going to ask for a discount or something like that, you might as well not even buy. I, I honestly don't want you to buy from me. Tell you the truth. I'm, I'm just so honest with it. I'm honest, like I promise you. If you want to sit there and try to ask me for a discount, because I feel like that's insulting as well. Because now that you sit back and think about it, you look at this person with these brands, and you mean something, you can't give me 40 to 50 dollars, but you want to sit there and tell me, oh, well, can I get a discount? No, and I don't give a damn what all the uh, boutiques, uh, Instagram boutiques are selling their property for five, ten dollars less. Then go to them and buy it. And, and, and it's probably not the same quality, because they will show you stuff. But everybody or, um, order it from different vendors. So things look similar, but when you get it, it's Wally, not always the same. Texture. So, hmm. <laughs> All right? I, so, I, I, hmm. I think what I did, no, I'm going to be honest. So it's only one time I did a discount. And the reason I did a discount was because um, I, f I felt it in my heart to give a guy a discount. It was, it was 2015, and we were on the, initially I sent my prices to um, a person who was being a liaison to the couple. Mm -hmm. And they called me, and I interrupt. I'm like, hey, I haven't heard, you know, from you. 
Um, she told you know the groom said X, Y, and Z. So I said, have the groom call me. I remember I had a conversation Ooh. with the groom. It was like a 20 minute conversation. I said, listen, this is what I'm gonna do for you. Ooh. I'm gonna offer you a discount. And he really broke down and started crying. And cause he was just so thankful and grateful. Oh cause he could not find a DJ that would charge, that would allow them to pay this money. I said, worry about it. So let me say something. There's a blessing in, in everything. Yeah. And literally because of that one event that I got a discount, that I gave a discount on, I got four other events. So it it always pays, but you know, it's not, I'm not always going to offer a discount. I'm not saying that, but when I feel led to, like, I'm going to do so. So like last year I did um, a fresh, I did a fresh Friday freebie last year. So what I did is every Friday um, I gave away money to people. Every Friday. The way I did it on my Instagram and Facebook is... Um, you just have to like the post, and then I would randomly choose a number, and based upon that number, if it fits you, based upon like the num the number of like posts. So let's say if you like the post and you're like the 25th person that liked it, mm -hmm. and if I did a random generator and it picked number 25, I would hit you up and be like, yo, you're the winner. Mm -hmm. And every Friday I would do $100, $50, $25, 20. Well, if you do something like that, let me know, because then I'll donate too. So you give them money with little things that I'll yeah. put. Because if it's a guy that went, who cares? Like, you guys could give whatever I'm offering to your girlfriend or your side chick, whatever you want to do. And you know you got everything out there. So and then, right, I would donate of, to bunch that, bunch too. entanglements and... Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, because I realize, you know, we, we are who we are in our business because of you. So we don't always want to take, take, take. take exactly. You know, we always want to give back. So, you know, to me, that was my give back last year. And, you know... Unlike the people... Okay, I'm not going to name no names, not to interrupt you, but unlike the people you're buying from that cost $12,000 for a bag. Uh -huh. The people ain't giving you back nothing. Uh -huh. But if you're mine as well, uh -huh. support to get back, to get something back later. Right. Because I don't see um them boo boo ZZs and Tooies and Gucci Tooies giving y'all no free bag. I don't see, I don't see no other DJ, you know, giving you back money. Mm -mm. And just because, and my thing last year, just because you won once doesn't mean you can't win again. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like that. Because if, my thing is to every to, there, there's a there's a blessing there's a reason to everything. Mm -hmm. So to me, it was just like if you won again, it's because it was your right to win again. Exactly. Well, guys, this has been great. Listen, and I'm happy to win again because I have a um, Q's and A's. I, I want to do. Listen, I was worried about the Q's and A's today. <laughs> All I could say was, Lord, <laughs> don't let her not today, Lord. <laughs> but I have Q's and A's coming up. I want to do, because you guys know I do a, a, I like to do whole episodes on those, really, because it'd be so many things, and I'm like, damn, where did he get this up from? Listen, I'm ready. And I also have another episode that's going to be good for you guys. I'm not going to say it, but I'm going to tell him when the camera stop rolling, but I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm like, right. I want to see. But thank you guys for tuning in. The book DJ so fresh. I'm going to put his information in the subscription of this video. I'm also going to tag him all week when I drop the video. On my YouTube page, on my Instagram page, Dre and Miss Stats. I'm going to tag it in Andre's closet. I'm also going to tag it on Talk With Dre and Friends. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Well, and first of all, not you guys. Thank you. No, thank you. For interviewing me. Thank and I didn't get to open my gift, but I'll take a picture of it later and I'll post it on my Instagram page. And also, if you're watching this video and you decide to book me, please say that you're coming from this video and I'll give you a 20% discount on your event. Aww. See? You support see those who support you. That's how it is. Thank you. So I'll see you guys later. Yes, Thank you guys peace for out. Me.